I wondered about the feeling of walking without crutches, running freely in the fields, leaping in happiness, living a normal life. I was often the subject of fun in school, but I'm used to it though. Yet, part of me still craves to earn respect, for others to laugh with me and not at me. I have a crush with this boy sitting behind me. Other than my feet, everything is completely normal about me being a girl. I'm always trying my best to be noticed by the only person that makes me feel the butterflies inside me. But falling in love with somebody doesn't mean a life like fairy tales, right? That sometimes you're just not meant to be a part of someone else's story. I often ask myself about how it feels to be loved in return by the one you really admired. that it would be too easy to tell your real feelings to someone, that no one forbids you to show how much you care, despite the words you will hear from the world. That rejection never exists, or maybe just the fear of facing it. I should be the class valedictorian. Well, not to mention I'm good at everything. I'm intelligent, I'm active, and I often know a lot about all the things under the sun than others. I should always be the one on top of the chain. Or so I thought. When I saw her name, it's like the end for me. What more should I have shown to outstand her? I think I did way better than that girl. That day, I wanted to be gone. I disappointed myself. So what else am I here for? It's better for me to disappear. To vanish from this world. To be unseen. Despite the fact that my feet sucked at being feet, my brain works more than it's supposed to. I am the class of a Victorian. Or maybe it's just out of luck, but still, I'm glad to be chosen.
But on the day of the practice for the valedictory speech, weird things started to happen. And I never knew that it was the beginning of the moment that will change my life forever. Why do people often judge those who depart the definition of being normal? That they often smell the stink and not the fragrance of their being. And the words that comes from their mouth are often offensive rather than encouraging. So what do you think they would see as they look at the mirror? Are they happy or sad to be imprisoned inside a situation that is hardly liked by others? Well, I guess there are two points where it headed. It's either that person becomes strong, taking the negativity as his motivation. he may become weak, living in inferiority. As for me, I am stuck in the ladder. This day will be a special day for me and my mother. It's her birthday, and as her daughter, I'm opt to make her happy for her special day. Sometimes it occurred to me that the best gift I could give her is when she opens the door, she will see me standing, without crutches, in front of her with a big smile I always wear. But this time, the smile is obsolete, which means I don't need to fake it. Death, why now? Why me? I'm scared. Is it the end of me? I woke up and found myself lying on the shore. I have no memories of what happened that day. As I stood up, I noticed a paper in the water and words are written on it. Reveal the good heart. Listen to the world apart. Understand and it will be the start. I tried to understand the words in the riddle. I went through the lines. I got nothing.
Everything was normal when I entered the room. It was the day of the practice for the valedictory speech. I looked at her, envious by knowing it wasn't me. It was supposed to be me, that I should be the one delivering those words in front of the crowd. She doesn't deserve it at all. But it's not what bothers me that day. I talk to my seatmate. But her expression indicates that something's wrong. It's like she can't see me. I am here, sitting beside her. So I tried to test if my thoughts were right. And you know what? Though it's really, really impossible, it is happening. I am invisible. I was afraid of it. I don't know what to do. Until she walked in front of me. Why would this situation scare me if I could use it for my own advantage? If I created a little accident to her, then I would be the one on stage delivering that speech that is supposed to be hers. I run into the nothingness of the earth, remembering what my father did to me that night. And what comes next is the pain I will never forget. And you know what hurts the most? Not the bruises I got from him, not the wounds he inflicted me, but the feeling of being unaccepted by your own father. And he almost heard my thoughts inside me. Just be who you really are. I followed her on the road to do what I planned. But suddenly, she was hit by a motorcycle. That's what I wanted, right? A little accident. But now, it's rather a big one. She was helpless at the moment. There's that lonely feeling while I'm staring at her. Maybe that's the time I really cared for her. And then, I wish that when she wakes up, she may have the ability to walk without those crutches, even if it costs mine. I lay her down in a place I know she's safe. And I heard someone sobs nearby. It was a girl. But her face looks familiar. Isn't it David? And I have a hint what happened to him. I tried to find the best words to comfort him. So I said, Just be who you really are. And then he fell asleep. And there's me, smiling at the thought that I actually cared. It felt that my life has escaped from the emptiness I was once in. woke 
up and find myself under the shade of the leaves. It was beautiful. And there's this feeling that I can feel my legs. Maybe this is all just a dream. I tried to stand, and to my surprise, I did. I slowly walked into the fields. And then I ran. I ran as fast as I could. I never thought this day would come, that miracles are bound to come, and that dreams could become real, as long as we hope, and as long as we don't stop believing. As I walked home from sleeping in the middle of nowhere, I have this weird feeling that nothing is wrong with me. That being gay isn't a sickness or a thing that I should hide forever. That I am not a mistake. I am a gift and bound to be a part of our society. I opened the door without hesitation. Before he burst out his hunger, I said to him, I will just be the person who I really am. And in that way, I'm going to make you proud. I entered the house and I stopped as I heard my father's voice. I looked at him. And the next moment I knew, I am home. We often anticipate good things to come in our lives. But sometimes, those things are just not meant for us. Yet, it is not a reason to give up. Because somewhere in our journey in life, better things will come about.
and as we are hopeful of a brighter future. Let us not forget the small things that fill the pieces to make us whole.